Hamas fired a barrage of rockets into central Israel at the stroke of midnight on New Year. This triggered sirens throughout the central and southern parts of the country. However, there were no reports of a direct hit. Hamas's armed wing said that the barrage was in response to massacres against civilians in Gaza. Yemen's Houthi rebel group said that 10 of their naval personnel are dead and missing. This is after three of their boats were attacked by U.S. forces in the Red Sea. The Houthis attacked a vessel from Danish shipping company Maersk in the Red Sea over the weekend. Following this, U.S. naval helicopters sank three of the four small boats that the Houthis had used in the attack. The Houthis have been attacking ships in the Red Sea for weeks in what they call a response to Israel's war in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that the border zone between the Gaza Strip and Egypt should be under Israel's control. Netanyahu said that the border, known as the Philadelphia Corridor, must be in Israel's hand. He suggested that the corridor must be shut to ensure demilitarization in Gaza. Netanyahu said this in a press conference as Israel entered the 13th week of its war against Hamas. The Israeli military will release some reservists who were called up to fight Hamas in Gaza. The Israeli army spokesperson said that the reservist soldiers will return to their families and their jobs this week. This is to relieve the economy as well as allow the soldiers to recuperate ahead of a prolonged war. Friends of a hostage being held in Gaza by Hamas have organized a dance class in her honor. This was in Tel Aviv's Hostage Square yesterday. 23-year-old Romy Gonen was kidnapped by Hamas during the October 7th attack. In the US, the final hours of 2023 saw new demonstrations in New York City in support of Palestinians. Protesters gathered at the Columbus Circle in Manhattan. They brought Palestinian flags, signs and even balloons calling for a free Palestine. Meanwhile, as the year drew, drew to a close, Palestinians in Gaza prayed for a ceasefire. However, they have little hope the new year will be better. In other news, fireworks lit up the sky globally as New Year celebrations reverberated across the globe. Sydney and Auckland were the first major world cities to welcome the arrival of 2024. Hong Kong put up its largest New Year's Eve fireworks display to date. In the UK, chimes from the Big Ben marked the arrival of the New Year. Meanwhile, in Dubai, people gathered at the iconic Burj Khalifa to celebrate the beginning of the year. Russia pounded the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv with missiles yesterday. Ukrainian offic officials said that the missiles hit residential buildings, hotels and medical facilities. The attack came hours after Moscow accused Kyiv of carrying out a deadly air assault on nearby Belgorod. Europe's longest-serving monarch, the Queen of Denmark, says she will abdicate. She is stepping down after 52 years on the throne. Queen Margaret uh, made the surprise announcement on live TV during her traditional New Year's Eve speech. The 83-year-old monarch said that her health conditions had led her to take the decision. She will be succeeded by her eldest son, Crown Prince Frederick. More than 3,000 police officers were on the streets in Berlin for New Year's Eve. This was to enforce new policies that were implemented to ensure the safety of citizens. People's bags were checked for fireworks or objects considered dangerous. This comes after celebrations last year were overshadowed by violent clashes. Young men had lobbed firecrackers and started fires in the streets of the German capital. Dozens of police officers, firefighters, rescue workers, pedestrians and journalists were injured during the 2022 attacks. U.S. presidential hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy has expressed his opinions about the Federal Bureau of Investigation. In a post uh, on the social media platform X, Ramaswamy argued that the organization cannot be reformed and hence it should be shut down. Ramaswamy has pledged to do so if he's elected president.
The Democratic Republic of Congo's president, Felix Tshisekedi, has been re-elected for a second term after a disputed election. The DRC's election commission announced that he won more than 73% of the votes. Earlier in the day, a group of the DRC's main opposition presidential candidates asked their supporters to take to the streets and protest after the release of the results. The DRC's opposition wants a repoll. They have called the results a quote-unquote sham. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has told the country's military commanders to react if there were provocations from the US or South Korea. He said that the most powerful means must be mobilized to destroy them if they chose military confrontation. Kim added that the danger of an armed confrontation on the Korean peninsula is becoming a reality. He blamed the escalations on the United States. Taiwan's outgoing president Tsai Ing-wen has said that the country's relations with China must be decided by the will of the people. She added that China should respect the outcomes of Taiwan's upcoming election. Her comments come after China's leader Xi Jinping said Taipei's reunification with Beijing was inevitable. China has been ramping up military pressure to assert, assert its sovereignty claims over the island. However, Taiwan rejects China's claims. In climate news, India's capital New Delhi and parts of the state of Punjab embraced the New Year swathed by a cloud of thick fog and cold. A red alert for fog and cold has been issued to both the regions today by the Indian Meteorological Department. Temperatures are expected to be in the range of 6 to 9 degrees Celsius. South Korea's capital, Seoul, experienced the heaviest snowfall in December in over 40 years. The city received snowfall of around 12 centimeters at the end of December. South Korea's safety agency has said that there were no casualties in Seoul and its surrounding areas. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz visited flood-hit areas in the federal state of Lower Saxony. He praised the emergency servicemen and volunteers at the scene. According to the authorities, the flood water has not receded and more rain is expected. Evacuation orders were issued in coastal California as giant waves and choppy waters raised the fear of flooding. The pier at California's Manhattan Beach was also closed because waves rose as high as six meters. The Weather Service in Los Angeles issued a forecast of significant flooding in low-lying coastal areas. Eastern Australia is facing continuous thunderstorms with heavy rains, hail and wind. The country's weather bureau has warned that the rains raise the risk of flash flooding in the region. The Australian government plans to deploy military veterans and retired emergency service workers to aid storm cleanups. Around 300 climate activists were held by police for blocking a major highway in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The activists were demanding an immediate end to fossil fuel project financing by the Dutch multinational bank ING. The blockade was organized by the climate group Extinction Rebellion. The bank called the protesters' demands radical. On to business and tech news, consulting firm McKinsey has agreed to pay $78 million to resolve claims by U.S. health insurers that it fueled an epidemic of opioid addiction. This is when it worked for drug companies including OxyContin maker Purdue Pharma. This is the latest in a series of settlements McKinsey has reached in resolving lawsuits over the U.S. opioid epidemic. Accountancy firm Ernst & Young is facing a new lawsuit claiming $1.7 billion in damages. This is over its role in auditing Wirecard's books before the German payments company collapsed in 2020. The suit was filed by Wirecard's insolvency manager Michael Jaff. It's one of the several lawsuits EY is facing in the matter. U.S. prosecutors have said that they do not plan to conduct a second trial against Sam Bankman-Fried. This is because the resolution in the previous trial outweighed the benefits of a second trial. Last month, Bankman-Fried was convicted of stealing from customers of his now bankrupt FTX cryptocurrency exchange. 
China's Ant Group has finished a procedure to remove its controlling stakeholders. As part of the process, China's central bank granted an application to remove any controlling shareholders at Ant's Chinese payment platform, Alipay. This comes almost a year after billionaire Jack Ma promised to cede his dominance at Ant. Chinese online retailer JD.com has won a lawsuit against rival Alibaba. It accused Alibaba of monopolistic practice. A Chinese court ruled that Alibaba's monopolistic practices caused severe damage to JD.com's business. Alibaba has now been fined over $140 million in relation with the case. China's Li Auto expects to launch and begin deliveries of its first fully electric car in March. It has already started taking pre-orders in China for its mega multi-purpose vehicle or MVP. It will cost about $84,000. In November, Li Auto said that the mega MVP will be the first model produced at its Beijing plant. McDonald's Malaysia has sued a movement that promotes boycotts against Israel for false and defamatory statements that hurt the fast food franchise's business. Boycott, divestment and sanctions Malaysia uh, is the movement and has, it's been sued for a series of social media posts. These uh, allegedly link the franchise to Israel's war in Gaza. McDonald's Malaysia is seeking more than $1 million in damages from the movement. Chocolate maker Hershey has been sued by a woman in the U.S. state of Florida for misleading advertisements. The woman accused uh, the holiday-themed Reese's peanut butter candies uh, lack the artistic designs shown on the packaging. The complaint said that consumers have been tricked and misled by the pictures on the product's packaging. An Indian court has ordered the release of two senior employees and a consultant at a Chinese smartphone maker Vivo's India unit. Earlier this month, they were arrested by India's law enforcement agency on charges of money laundering. Following this, the employees had filed an application challenging the arrest and declaring it illegal. OpenAI's annualized revenue recently topped $1.6 billion. This was predominantly fueled by its blockbuster chatbot ChatGPT. ChatGPT was released in 2022. Following its release, ChatGPT took the global tech sector by storm, not only for its capabilities, but also for raising fears of the effect of artificial intelligence on jobs. Moving to sports, let's start with cricket. New Zealand beat Bangladesh in a T20 match over the weekend. Bangladesh were bowled out for just 110 runs in the 19th over. Then the match was delayed due to rain. New Zealand chased down the revised target of 79 runs with five wickets in hand. With the win, New Zealand and Bangladesh have ended the three-match T20 series tied one all after the second match was washed away. The United Arab Emirates beat Afghanistan in a T20 match last night. The UAE batted first and scored 166 runs in their innings. During the chase, Afghanistan were bowled out for 155 runs in a final over thriller. The UAE and Afghanistan are now tied one all in the three-match T20 series. Australian opener David Warner has announced his retirement from one-day international cricket. Warner says that his final 50-over match was the World Cup final against India, which Australia won. Later this month, the 37-year-old will also retire from test cricket. However, Warner says that he will continue to play T20 cricket for Australia. In football, Fulham beat Arsenal 2-1 in last night's Premier League match. Bukayo Saka scored in the fifth minute to give Arsenal an early lead. Then, Fulham equalised in the 29th on a goal from Raul Jimenez. In the second half, Bobby Cordova-Reed scored the winning goal for Fulham. Tottenham Hotspur beat Burnmouth 3-1 last night. The Spurs ended the first half with a 1-0 lead. In the second half, Hyung Min Son extended the lead for Tottenham in the 71st. Just nine minutes later, Richarlison scored again for Spurs. Burnmouth managed to net one goal in the 84th minute on a strike from Alex Scott. In the Serie A, Juventus beat AS Roma 1-0 last night. The game was scoreless in the first half. 
Adrian Rabio scored in the 47th for Juventus. With the win, Juventus have now climbed to the second spot in the Italian league. Portuguese forward Cristiano Ronaldo became the highest goal scorer for 2023. Ronaldo scored 54 goals for his club Al Nasser and for Portugal. He was trailed by England forward Harry Kane and French striker Kylian Mbappe, who both ended up with 52 goals. Argentina will retire the jersey number 10 in honour of Lionel Messi. According to Argentine officials, no other player will be allowed to wear the jersey number 10 once Messi retires. Argentina have already tried once to retire the jersey number 10. However, FIFA rules say that teams must use the numbers from 1 to 23. The Indian team has arrived in Qatar for the AFC Asian Cup. The Blue Tigers will likely be led by forward Sunil Chetri. India will play their first match against Australia on the 13th of January. In basketball, the Detroit Pistons beat the Toronto Raptors last night. The final score of the nail-biter was 129-127. to The Pistons have now avoided setting a new record for the longest losing streak in NBA history. This season, the Pistons had lost 28 matches in a row. In entertainment news, Taylor Swift has broken Elvis Presley's record for the most weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart for a solo artist. She achieved this milestone with the album 1989 Taylor's Version. Taylor Swift reached the 68-week mark, surpassing Elvis Presley's 67 weeks. Rapper Snoop Dogg will join NBC's coverage of the 2024 Paris Olympics. He's expected to provide a unique take on the events at the athletic extravaganza. The rapper expressed his exp excitement about celebrating the athlete's skills and bringing his distinctive style to the event. Snoop Dogg says, and I quote, it is going to be the most epic Olympics ever. Singer Dua Lipa concluded 2023 with a trip to India. She posted a carousel of images on social media, giving a glimpse of her time in the country. She described the experience as deeply meaningful. Dua Lipa visited various places in India like the capital New Delhi and parts of the state of Rajasthan. Rapper Cardi B has dismissed rumours about her reuniting with her estranged husband, Offset. She wrote that she won't carry toxic energy into 2024. The rapper continued by emphasising that she is single. Singer Paula Abdul has filed a sexual assault lawsuit against British TV executive Nigel Lithgow. She accused Lithgow of assault during their collaborations on talent shows like American Idol. Abdul cited the fear of job loss and contractual restrictions for not taking action earlier. Lithgow has denied the allegations. Actor Jamie Dornan recounted his most frightening fan encounter. He said that after he gained fame because of Fifty Shades of Grey, a fan appeared at his house where his children were also present. Dornan says he tries to block all the noise associated with fandom so that it doesn't affect him and his family. Game of Thrones creator George R.R. R. Martin has revealed plans for three animated series set in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire. Martin wrote about this in his new blog post. The shows are yet to be greenlit by HBO, but the work is reportedly in progress. Game of Thrones is an adaptation of the fantasy novel series A Song of Ice and Fire, written by George R.R. R. Martin. Warner Brothers Wonka has surpassed Aquaman 2 and the color purple at the box office during the New Year's weekend. As of December 31st, 2023, Wonka made $142 million domestically in the US and $386.9 million worldwide. According to reports, Aquaman 2 stands at, global, at a global collection of $258.3 million and the color purple at $50 million. 
comedian Dave Chappelle's new special, The Dreamer, started streaming on Netflix yesterday. The comedian's new show explores a broader range of topics compared to his earlier shows. While less focused on specific communities, he still addresses marginalized groups, including the disabled. The Dreamer is the comedian's seventh stand-up special exclusive to Netflix. Actor Tom Wilkinson has passed away at the age of 75. His family confirmed that he passed away at his home suddenly. Wilkinson was known for his roles in Batman Begins and Full Monty. He's survived by his wife Diana Hardcastle and two daughters.